It should also be noted that Zelensky's visit was meant to reinvigorate support for his country in the US and also around the world. Why so? Well, because lately Ukraine has been plagued by concerns that its allies are growing weary of the costly war and its disruption to global food and energy supplies. But the White House meet between the two heads of state was only a testimony to the US's unwavering support to the war-torn nation. The US president not only assured Ukraine that US stands with the country, but also detailed the multi-billion dollar US security assistance to Ukraine. President Zelensky, I'm honored to welcome you back to the White House. We spent an awful lot of time on the telephone as well as on video, but it's good to see you in person again. And uh, we've been in close and frequent communication throughout this conflict from the very beginning. But particularly, uh, it's particularly meaningful to talk with another in person, look each other in the eye, because leadership through this uh, terrible crisis has inspired the Ukrainian people, as you have done, Mr. President, and the American people and the entire world. This visit to Washington, your first trip outside Ukraine since February, comes as President Putin is escalating his attacks, his brutal attacks targeting critical infrastructure to make life as hard as possible for not only innocent Ukrainians, but children and young children and everything from orphanages to schools. It's just outrageous what he's doing. And we've, uh, as we've heard, into the, as we head into the new year, it's important for the American people and for the world to hear directly from you, Mr. President, about Ukraine's fight and the need to continue to stand together through 2023. 300 days since Putin launched an unprovoked, unjustified, all-out assault on the free people of Ukraine. 300 days of Ukrainian people showing Russia and the world their steel backbone, their love of country, and their unbreakable determination, and I emphasize unbreakable determination, to choose their own path. To Ukrainian people, I say to them all, you have demonstrated, you have shown your strong stand against aggression in the face of the imperial appetites of autocrats who wrongfully believe you might, you might, they, they might be able to make might right, and they're not able to do it. Thus far, they've not, they've stood alone, you know, and you have, but you haven't stood alone. You have had significant, significant help. We've never stand alone. You will never stand alone. When Ukraine's freedom was threatened, the American people, like generations of Americans before us, did not hesitate. The support from all across this country, Americans of every walk of life, Democrats and Republicans alike, had the resources and the, to rebound and resounding united way to do, provide unequivocal and unbending support for Ukraine. Today, I'm announcing the next term on which we'll train Ukrainian forces to operate as part of the ongoing effort to help bolster Ukraine's air defense. It's going to take some time to complete the necessary training, but the Patriot Battery will be another critical asset for Ukraine as it defends itself against Russian aggression. The United States and our allies and partners around the world have delivered a broad range of assistance at historic speed, and it's been critical to bolstering Ukraine's success thus far. Ukraine has won the Battle of Kyiv, has won the Battle of Kherson, has won the Battle of Kharkiv. Ukraine has defied Russia's expectations at every single turn. The American people know that if we stand by in the face of such blatant attacks on liberty and democracy and the core principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity, the world would surely face worse consequences. And as I said, when Putin rolled his tanks into Ukraine in February, American, American people are prepared to have us stand up to bullies, stand up for freedom. That's who we are as Americans. And that's exactly what we've done. From the very beginning, the United States rallied allies and partners from around the world to stand strong with Ukraine and impose unprecedented, and I emphasize unprecedented sanctions and export controls on Russia, making it harder for the Kremlin to wage this brutal war. More than 50 nations have committed nearly 2,000 tanks 
and other armored vehicles, more than 800 artillery systems, more than 2 million rounds of artillery ammunition, and more than 50, more than 50 advanced multiple rocket launching systems, anti-ship and anti- and air defense systems, all to strengthen Ukraine. We provide humanitarian assistance to help the millions of Ukrainians who have been forced to flee their homes because of Putin's inhumane, brutal war. Communities across Europe have opened their hearts and their homes to help Ukrainians in need. The United States has been proud to welcome more than 221,000 Ukrainians seeking refuge since March of 2022, including as part of Uniting for Ukraine, as, as part of our Uniting for Ukraine program. And today, USAID is committing more than $374 million in urgently needed humanitarian assistance for Ukraine. We both want this war to end. We both want it to end. And as I've said, uh, uh, it could end a day if Putin had any dignity at all and did the right thing and just said, pulled out. But uh, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen now. So what comes next? we talked about today was we're going to continue to help Ukraine succeed on the battlefield. It can succeed in the battlefield with our help and the help of our European allies and others. So that if and when President Zelensky is ready to talk with the Russians, he will be able to succeed as well because he will have won on the battlefield. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I don't think we should underestimate the impact this war is having on Russia and the losses they're suffering. And uh, you saw just, uh, I think it was two days ago, Putin uh, saying that uh, this is much tougher than he thought. He thought he could break NATO. He thought he could break the West. He thought he could break the alliance. He thought he could be welcomed by the Ukrainian people that were Russian speaking. He was wrong, wrong, and wrong. He continues to be wrong. The sooner he makes it, it's clear that he cannot possibly win this war, that's when the time we have to put the, this president in a position to be able to decide how he wants the war to end. Ladies and gentlemen, I came here to the United States to thank the people of America, people who do so much for Ukraine. I'm thankful for all of this. This visit to the United States became really a historic one for our relations with the United States and the American leadership. In the last 30 days of this war, we have started a new phase of our interrelations with the United States. We became real partners and allies. The main issue during my today's talks is to strengthen Ukraine. Next year, our movement forward to fight for our freedom and independence. I have good news. Returning home, President Biden announced a new package of defense support, about 2 billion US dollars. And the strongest element of this package is the Patriot's battery system something that will strengthen our air defense significantly. This is a very important step to create a secure airspace for Ukraine. And that's the only way we would be able to deprive that terrorist country and their terror attack to attack, to strike our energy sector, our people and our infrastructure. We had a very good negotiation and talks about our strategic steps, which were discussed with President Biden and what we expect next year and for what we are preparing. This is very important for all Ukrainians and I'm hopeful and once again thank you Mr. President for 45 billion because this is a big assistance and I hope that the Congress will approve this financial assistance for our country. This winter we need to protect our people and we need to be very specific in this area. This is a key humanitarian issue for us right now. This is the survival issue. This winter, we need to protect our people and we need to be very specific in this area. This is a key humanitarian issue for us right now. This is the survival issue. Russia needs to hold to be held accountable for everything it does against us, against our people, against Europe and the whole free world. And it is very important that we have the peace formula. And for that, we offer very specific steps what America can do to help us to implement them. We propose a global formula for peace summit. I am thankful for our American counterparts that they feel us and understand how important it is to continue and stay on course and work on the integrity of the country and international rule of law. We will also meet as soon as our defense capabilities will be strengthened in the next few months. I don't want to discuss it in detail right now. I believe you understand why. 
I am very grateful to President Biden. Thank you for your attention to all of these issues. Glory to Ukraine. Дуже вдячен президенту Байдену. Дякую за увагу. Слава Україні.